This is part 97 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the power and use of SELECT INTO statement in SQL Server. For the purpose of this demo, we'll be using these two tables, departments and employees. I've already created these tables and here is the SQL script to create and populate them with test data. I'll have the script available on my blog in case you need it. So what's the use of SELECT INTO statement? SELECT INTO statement selects data from one table and inserts it into a new table. Now let's look at some of the use cases for this SELECT INTO statement. We can use it to copy all rows and columns from an existing table into a new table. This is extremely useful when you want to make a backup copy of the existing table. Let's understand this with an example. Here we have got this employees table which has some data within it. Now we want to make a backup copy of this table. The easiest way to do that is by using SELECT INTO statement. Look at the example here. Select star into employees backup from employees table. So the star here specifies that we want to retrieve all the rows and columns from employees table and then this employees backup table should be created on the fly and all that data from the employees table should be inserted into that employees backup table. This employees backup table has to be a new table. It cannot be an existing table. If you specify an existing table with SELECT INTO statement, it's going to throw an error saying that the table already exists. Let's look at this in action. Let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. So if you look at the tables folder within sample DB database, we don't have the employees backup table there. We only have the employees table. So now let's go ahead and execute our SELECT INTO statement. So when we execute that, the first thing that should happen is this employees backup table should have been created on the fly and all the data from employees should have been copied into it. So let's refresh this tables folder. Notice that we have our employees backup table there and when we select the data from it, we should have all the rows of the employees table within that employees backup. Now let's go ahead and drop this table. Now. We can also use this SELECT INTO statement to copy all rows and columns from an existing table into a new table in an external database. So if you look at this employees and employees backup table, they are present within the same database. Now what if you want you know, the backup in a different database? Now here I have another database, HRDB. Now what we want to do is create a backup copy for this employees table in an external database that is in HRDB database. So the employees table is present in sample DB but we want the backup in another database HRDB. Now we can still achieve that using select into statement. All we have to do is specify the fully qualified name. So this employees backup table has to be present in HRDB database and we're using the schema DBO. So HRDB.DBO dot employees backup. So when we execute this select into statement, you know, this employees backup table should have been created in HRDB database. So let's go ahead and refresh this tables folder. Notice that we have the employees backup table there and when we select the data, we should have all the rows of the employees table. So now let's go ahead and drop that table. We can also use the SELECT INTO statement to copy only selected columns into a new table. So if you look at this employees table, we have got like five columns in it. Now let's say for example, in our backup table, I don't want all the columns. I just want the first three columns, ID, name and gender. Okay, if that's the case, instead of using star, simply specify the column list, the columns that you want. We want ID name gender from employees table. The backup table has to be employees backup. So this table will now have only those three columns. So let's look at that in action. When I execute that, the employees backup table is created on the fly with those three columns and all the data should have been copied into that. So let's drop this backup table again. Now we can also use SELECT INTO statement to copy only selected rows into a new table. So now if you look at this employees table, at the moment it has got five rows in it. Uh, in it. Now what we want to do is we want to retrieve and make a backup copy of the employees whose department is department ID 1. We can still do that using a WHERE clause here. 
So in this case, the schema for this employees backup table is going to match up with the employees table. But as far as the data is concerned, it's going to contain only the employee rows where department ID equals one. So let's go ahead and execute this query. Now look at that, the message says two rows affected and if you look at the data in our backup table, we should only have those employees whose department ID is one. Let's drop that. Now, so far we have seen examples of how to make a backup copy from a single table. Now we can also use select into to copy columns from two or more tables into a new table. So here we have got two tables, departments and employees. Now what I want to do is I want to copy all the columns from both of these tables into, you know, a backup table. Okay. So if you look at the select into statement here, this is again straightforward. Now let me actually remove that, star, uh, you know, into here. And let me say simply select star from employees in a joint departments and that's the joint condition. We are joining with department ID in employees table with department ID in departments table. So when we execute this, what are we going to get? We're going to get, you know, all the columns from both the tables. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here is select star into employees backup. So this is going to select all these rows and columns into this employees backup table. Let's actually look at that in action. So I am going to execute this. And when we select data from employees backup, look at that. We've got all the columns and rows from both the tables, employees and departments. Now, what if we want, you know, only specific columns? Now, if you look at this data, definitely department ID is duplicated. We have department ID in employees table and department ID in departments table. Now, let's say we want only, you know, one column, either from the employees table or from the departments table. We don't want that to be duplicated. We can still do that. So instead of specifying star here, we can specify the list of columns that we want. So let's do that now. So let's actually drop this and I am going to say we want all the columns from employee table. So I'm going to say employees uh, dot star and then I want from departments table. So departments dot department name. So let's execute this. And now if we select from employees backup, notice that we only got the department ID from employees table and then, you know, the department name from departments table. We didn't get the department ID column from departments table. So you can either specify star or the column list that you want when you're joining two or more tables. So here the example covers only two tables, but you can have as many tables as you want. Now, you can also create a new table whose columns and data types match with an existing table. Now, there might be situation where, you know, your table has got a lot of columns, maybe like 40 to 50 different columns in a given table. Now, your requirement is to create a table whose schema matches with that table, but you don't want any data within that new table that you're going to create. Now, you can still do that using select into. If you have to manually do that, you know, you have to write that create table script and it's going to take a bit of time. But with select into statement, it's going to take literally like five seconds to do that. Now, the trick here is to specify your where clause and, you know, the condition here is never going to be true. One not equal to one. That will never be true. So no rows will be copied from employees into this employees backup. Okay, it will only create that table with the structure of the employees table. Okay, let's look at that in action. Let's drop this employees backup table. And now I'm going to execute this query right here. And look at the message. It says zero rows affected. That means no rows are copied from the employees table into employees backup. But the structure of this table must be very similar to employees table. Look at that. We've got ID name, gender, salary, and department ID columns, the same columns that we have in employees table. Now, 
one very important thing to keep in mind is that you cannot use select into statement to select data into an existing table. Select into statement can only be used to select data into a new table. Okay, to select data into an existing table, you will have to use insert into statement. So look at this. When I execute this select star into employees backup, now at the moment we have this employees backup table. We don't have any data in that, so it's an existing table. And here I'm using select into statement. I'm trying to select data into this existing table and look at what we are going to get. Look at the message. It says there is already an object named employee backup in the database. So you cannot use select into statement to select data into an existing table. To select data into the existing table, you will have to use insert into statement. So here, insert into employees backup, select star from employees. So when we do that, it's going to retrieve all the rows from employees and insert them into this existing table, employees backup. There we go. Now let's actually truncate the data in this one. So truncate table employees backup. So this is going to remove all the rows from that table. So now we don't have any data. Now let's say for some reason you don't want you know all the columns from employees table. We only want to insert ID name and gender column values. Uh, but not salary and department ID. If that's the case, you can specify the column list here. So insert into employees backup and the values that I want to insert are ID name, gender and we want to select ID name and gender from employees. So when we execute this within our employees backup, you know only those three columns should be populated whereas salary and department ID are not. Thank you for listening and have a great day.